People usually comment that your name is also a flower, or that you're named after it, or it after you. With these words, Camilla Youssef once started her poem, Zarna. Camilla Youssef is a Detroit-based poet, organizer, graduate student, and teacher. She's a member of the Z Collective and a board member of the Radius of Arab American Writers, Raleigh. Her poetry and essays have been published in Mizna, Burst, Tom, among others, and she has shared her work on stages across the U.S. You can find her on Fridays, hosting open mic nights at the Bottom Line Coffee House, right near what will always be called the Cass Corridor. She's a daughter of Lebanese immigrants with a special love for 90s freestyle, and I heard that you make a mean pecan pie. I don't know if that's still valid. Currently, she's interested in the eco-poetics of immigrant and POC literatures and acts of non-translation. Her ongoing work is mastering the art of being in multiple places at once. Without further ado, Camila Youssef. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hussam. I'm very happy to be here. Hi. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, OK, sorry. So I'm going to start um, on bodies. I never learned how to pray, only to repeat words until they grow their own bodies and leave. I'll see you soon, my father says on the phone. I can hear the continents between us rumbling, the creaking sunlight, the shuffle of shoes on mats. I imagine my, fa I imagine my father's body brittle, working bones, a screeching halt. I cannot soften his hands again in my mind, nor can I recall their freckled constellations. There is a body here. I do not trust it, for it is not my own. This body has been broken like a window or a bone, but never like a stopped watch. I carry a brick with me everywhere to feel its weight in my palm. Others of you carry it too. You may call it a home. Thank you. Um, I'll do just a few short ones. Oh, here's one. Okay. Um, I love, okay, anybody, when you drive down Oakman in Dearborn, you see the shopping carts parked on Oakman? Yeah? 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 Okay. I have a theory. I don't know who does them, who, ha who puts them there, but I think it's the Hajjiz. So I have a poem called Hajjiz in Detroit, because I love them. My God, Bijan, you know, I love Dearborn. This is the best place on earth. Anjad, Allah, it's so magical. I mean, we, we have work to do. Akid, but it's fun. This one is called Hajjiz in Detroit. Okay, Hashem bil Iglise. Okay, I used to work in California and I used to work with soldiers, men who used to be American soldiers, biruho bishirlo ma'na bil warehouse. Ffi wahad mana mihkile, alle, oh yeah, when I was in Iraq, those hajis. What's a haji? Uh, that's what they call Arab, bin Iraq. They, they call us hajis. It's aslan haj, mish haj. And like, they, they don't know the word for, they don't know how to talk about us. So I said, oh no. I lost the poem. So I said, I got it. Sorry. So I said, uh, I want to title, it's called Hajjiz in Detroit. I want to title a poem Hajji, poem, because the word Hajji exists in the English language and has, and has had many meanings and connotations before I had anything to do with it. Hajji. Noun. The lady in the long navy abaye and the paisley scarf, the frame to her portrait, the one with grocery bags in each hand, wondering if she could balance the jarra on her head like her mother used to back home. Hajjis are known to tell stories. Hajjis tuck treasures into their bras. They, 
the masters of knowing what to carry when you have to leave everything behind. Hajjis tuck ligorish under their tongues. Hajjis have carried knives and past lives. Now, Hajjis steal shopping carts from Super Greenland. They park the cart of front her house for carting her purse down the street to market and for bags of groceries on the return home. Hajji cruises down the street in her arabeye. She parks her ride on the verdurous bed next to the sidewalk before she goes inside to cook a mean meal to wash down this bitter life. And then I'll do one more. This is a short one. So this one, um, I wanted to know, I have all these, my parents came from Lebanon, I've been to Lebanon multiple times, but I always feel like if Lebanon could talk, she would say, I don't, you don't know me. And so I always wonder, what would Lebanon say if she would tell me who she is? Nice. So this is, sorry, okay. This is the poem. It says, I've dreamt of the homeland more times than I've been to the homeland. She says, whenever you dream me alive, make me as big as an elephant. Imagine me soft and slow. Imagine my weight in tons and imagine yourself crushed beneath it and dream yourself a crumpled up passport, flattening itself back to life. Tell me, what wrinkles should I keep Whenever you dream me alive, switch on the light to see the pathless woods. Let me dream my way through them. Get me lost in the crush of the velvet dark. Remember the seagulls remembering their heavy wings. Remember we are weightless when we fly, but some of us are weightless on this earth, like the husk of a hemlock tree that hollows itself into a home for others and their coming histories. Whenever you dream me alive, make me not like a photograph, still and certain of itself, a husk of a time. Alive, she says, I am a dream, a forever draping tide, a single log of aspen wood, burning many ways over and over again. Thank you, everyone.